Okay, so now for example number six, we're going to be asked to find an exponential function. And so they give us some data, and I'm not going to write them all down. There's a whole bunch of them listed in your textbook. I'm going to write down some of them. And what they've done is they've tracked the population of the U.S., of, for the whole United States. In the, it's in millions. And so, like in 1990, uh, apparently there were 76.2 million uh, people, okay? And then I'm just going to skip. It goes like 1991 or 1900, 1910. It's not 1990. It's 1900. Oops, I already screwed that up. So in the year 1900, there were 76.2 million people. And so I'm going to skip down, and I'll do like 1920. It does that. It counts by every 10 years, but just for time's sake, I'm not going to write them all down. Uh, and then like in 1950, there was like uh, 151.3 million. And then in 1970, there was 203.3 million. And then in the year 2003, uh, there was 290.8 million. Now, I, I suppose if you wanted to go on the internet, you could find out how many people we have uh, now. And it says, use this data to predict the population in 2003. So now, this is, this is the actual data, all right? So let's say Mr. Adams was curious in 1970, and I wanted to know about how many people were going to be, uh, what was the population in the United States in 2003, right? So I could actually do that. I could, I could make a mathematical model using this data, and... And make a prediction. So the way that I do that is I go to stat and I'm going to clear all my list. So I start fresh. Oh, I hate when it does that. You got to tell it which list to clear. Sometimes it's easier just to hit setup editor. Setup editor works faster. It just like wipes everything clean. But that's another way too. Like, if you guys have you guys accidentally have you ever accidentally erased one of the lists? Like L one is completely gone. When you do setup editor, it clears all your lists and it sets it up to the default. It like starts fresh. Um, if you go up into L two, in other words, like sometimes if you it still didn't do it, but sometimes if you're up here and you hit delete instead of clear, uh, it'll get rid of the whole column. Okay. And so sometimes if you hit setup editor, it'll get rid of everything. But I didn't put the argument in there. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to say 1900, right? Uh, and I'm just going to plug in these columns. And now while I'm doing this, I want you guys to have your calculators out and do it as well. Okay? So as I look out, I should see everybody with a calculator in their hand. Let's go. Grab them. Grab them. Go to stats. I want to see everybody plug them in. If you didn't bring your calculator class, it's your fault. Bring it tomorrow. We're going to use a lot of calculator stuff. Okay. All right. So now um, we're only doing up to 1970. Now in the textbook, they do every year until uh, 2000. All right. Uh, I'm going to skip all that just because we just don't have time. It will take me forever to enter all that information in. Um, it will change our 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 um, graph a little bit, but that's okay. You'll get the gist of it. So now I'm entering in the population along with the corresponding year. All right. So now if I go to zoom fit, that should fit. Or no, I'm sorry, zoom stat, because I've entered in some stats. Uh-oh. What do I got to do? I still got the work from example number five in there. So I got to go to y equals, and I got to clear out those graphs because I don't want to see those. 
Now, I could clear them out or I could just turn them off. Do you know when you, the equal sign is highlighted like that? If I hit enter again, it unmarks it. And if I hit enter again, it unmarks it. Now, when I hit graph, the graphs aren't there. It won't graph it. It's another way to like turn those graphs off without deleting the equation. So if you have an equation or something in there you don't want to lose, that's one way to do it. But we want to go to stat plot, and i got to turn my plots on. So let's turn it on. L1, L2 is what I need by default. We'll leave it as blue. The little boxes are fine. Now if I hit zoom stat, that's what I have. Um, I'm going to change the window a little bit. Uh, if I change the window a little bit, I, I want to make my X max because we're going, we want to make a prediction for 2003. So I'm going to make my X value to like 2005. Okay. Now, if I come down to my Y value, what does the Y, y value represent in uh, regular English? Well, remember that X represents the year, and Y represents the population. So what I'm going to do is, I think my population is going to be at least 290 million. So I'm going to change my Y max to 300. Okay? Does anybody have any questions about that? Does that make sense while we're doing it that way? Now when I hit enter, or I hit graph, I'm sorry, uh, I just see the points. I think this is a population model, which means it's a population growth, and whenever we do growth or decay, the first regression we should always try is exponential. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to stat, I'm going to go to calc, and I'm going to come down here, and it's not power regression, it's exponential. They look similar, and we've talked about that before. Oops, I, I, I went right past it. Because we're recording the video, the calculator is like a second behind. So I want an exponential regression. And I want to store it. So to store it, does anybody remember how to store it as, as an equation? I'm going to say second, or no, not second. Now i got to turn the second off. Is it turned on or off? Uh, I think it's... Now it's off. I'm just going to hit bars, then I'm going to go to Y bars, I'm going to hit function. Now remember, Mr. Adams, I did this on purpose, I didn't delete Y1 or Y2, I left those in there. So I'm going to have it store the equation to Y3, okay? Then I hit enter, I come down to calculate, let's do this. Boom. All right, so that's the equation that it came up with. Now if I go to Y equals, guess what? My third equation is stored for me. Notice that the equal sign is highlighted, so that means that it'll only graph the third equation. So if I hit graph, bloop, 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 bloop. You gotta make that noise. No, not, not too early in the morning. All right, now if I have the graph and I hit trace, and I enter in the value, oh, let's see how it says plot. I don't want the plot, I want trace. So I hit the down button and the down upper down button toggles through the plot or through the graph. What you see on the top is either the equation or the plot. Okay? So when I hit trace now, if I enter in 2003, according to my model, I should have 318 million. So how far off am I? I'm off a little bit, right? Now the numbers that I have here, it says, uh, it says for us, compare the result with the listed value of 2003. Well, according to my model, according to my my calculator, my model predicted 318 million roughly, and what it was actually in 2003 was 290, well it's 290, 800,000. Oh, it's a million, so it's like this. 
right? And so there's a little bit of a difference. Not much, though. Okay? Any questions on that? I want to double check that, though, because that seems almost a little too high. What was our equation that we got? We got 4.05 for our initial condition. Oh, okay. Do you know why ours is so different? We went, we use the year. Okay? So if we use the year, what would the initial condition be? Zero, right? Uh, or close to it. So we use the actual year. So if I go back here to get the answer in the back of the book. So in other words, what your book did is that this right here, this would be like year zero. And this would be, if you count them by ten, this would be two. This would be five. This would be seven. So now if I come in here and I go to editor, let's see how much of a difference that makes. And I put 0, uh, uh, 2, I'm sorry, 2, and then 5, and then 7. Now my everything's going to change. My graph's going to change. Everything's going to change. So what I need to do now is I need to go to Y bars. I need to change this and erase this. Okay. Then I need to go to Zoom Stat 9. And then for my y value, I'm gonna that still needs to be at 300 for my y value because that's the population amount. Oh, not 300. And then my x value may need to be a little bigger, like 10 or 12. Let's do um, we'll do 110. And actually, you know what? Let's count by year, too. So let me go back. I want to change this. Um, I want to go to stat, and I want to count it by year because I want to know exactly how many years. So it would be zero for the first one, and instead of 10, it would be 20 years. And then this one would be 50 years, and then the next one would be 70 years. Zoom stat. All right. And I'm going to change that a little bit. We want 110 for my X max, and then about 320, I guess. 320 for this. Now let's see what the graph says. So now I'm going to get stat, go to calc, right? We're going to go to re, uh, ex exponential, which I think is just zero. Yeah, zero. We're going to store this in Y3. And now we'll get a number similar to the one in the book. Now remember, theirs was 80 for their initial condition. The reason ours is 80 is because we didn't list every possible point that the book had listed. So if I hit graph, same type of looking graph, different numbers, but now we're counting how many years from 1900. So how many years from 1900 is 2003? 103 years, right? So if I hit trace, yeah, you guys said the wrong answers. If I hit that, it's still 318 million, though. See how that? See how the population doesn't change? Does that make sense to you guys? Any questions on that? All right. 